ladies and gentlemen, I'm Janice, the moderator for this conference. Welcome to the conference call of Deep Industries Limited, arranged by Concept Investor Relations, to discuss its Q1 FI22 results. We have with us today Ms. Aparas Savla, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Rohan Shah, Director of Finance and Group CFO. At this moment, all participants are on listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question-answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gaurav Girdar from Concept PR. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Janice. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the con call for Deep Industries Limited to discuss its Q1 and FI, uh, Q1 FI22 results. We have with us today Mr. Faris Shavla. Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Rohan Shah, Chief uh, Director of Finance. Uh, certain statements in this con call may be forward-looking, and we have uploaded a presentation which gives out a disclaimer to that effect. So I now like to hand over the floor to Faris, sir. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to all of you. I welcome you all to the conference call of Deep Industries Limited to discuss the financial performance for the first quarter ended June 30th, 2021. With the unlocking of the economy, I firmly believe the economic recovery will be very fast. At the same time, I would urge everyone not to be complacent and take all the necessary precautions as there is a prediction of third wave coming soon. Firstly, I would like to give a small brief about Deep Industries Limited present a few highlight of the quarter gone by and open the floor for question and answers. The investor presentation has been uploaded on our website as well as the stock exchanges. I hope you had a chance to glance through it. Deep Industries is a one-stop solution provider to the energy sector. With a vision to cater to the global energy needs and by focusing on people, environment and innovative technology, the company is specialized in providing natural gas compression services, drilling and work over rigs services, natural gas dehydration services, and I have also forwarded into integrated project management services. Over the years, Deep Industries Limited has invested time and effort in building up a strong infrastructure and information system capabilities and has been an energy infrastructure equipment solution provider for every need of energy sector, including oil and gas field operations. Deep Industries' comprehensive services portfolio is well supported by skilled manpower and a wide range of equipment to be used in the industry from exploration and production services to the midstream services while maintaining safety and quality as an integral part of corporate governance. We are the only company with presence in gas compression, rigs, gas dehydration and integrated project services and it could be broadly divided as the above four segments mentioned. Deep Industries has recently also forwarded into a manufacturing of CNG booster compressors through its subsidiary RAS Equipment Private Limited. Excuse me, members of the management, we are unable to hear you. Members of the management, we are unable to hear your audio. Requesting ladies and gentlemen to please stay connected. We are just checking the connection for the management. Requesting participants to please stay connected. We are just trying to reconnect the management back to the conference requesting you all to please stay online. Thank you.
is patiently holding the line. We have the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Um, I'm sorry for the line getting disconnected. Um, so, Deep Industries Limited has recently forayed into manufacturing of CNG booster compressors through its subsidiary RAS Equipment Private Limited. RAS has the capability to manufacture booster compressor packages of 22 kilowatt and 37 kilowatt, which are highly efficient, low noise, and optimally designed. The booster compressors are in full compliance with the regulatory requirements and PESO specifications. CNG booster compressors are critical to huge expansion of city gas distribution network undertaken by PNGRB. As per market estimate, more than 20,000 booster CNG compression stations and around 6,600 online CNG compression stations are to come up during period of six to eight years. Of these, 6,600 CNG compressor stations, at least 80% shall be daughter booster stations requiring booster compressor packages, which will result into creating huge demand for booster packages. RAS has currently installed capacity of around 250 units per annum, and we are aiming to increase the capacity in next three years. The total award of recent, uh, uh, the total value of the recent awards in all the, uh, putting all the segments together is around 132.51 crore. Now, I shall hand over to Mr. Rohan Shah, Director of Finance and CFO, to take you through the financial highlights for the quarter ended 30th June 2021. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Let me begin with standalone numbers for quarter one financial performance of the company. Revenue from operations on standalone basis is rupees 67.86 crore up by 31.15% as compared to 51.74 crore in Q4 FY21. EBITDA on standalone basis for the quarter is rupees 30 crore, up by 20.43% as compared to 24.91 crore in Q4 FY21. Standalone EBITDA margin stands at 44.21%. Standalone PAT came at rupees 16.87 crore as compared to loss of 1.86 crore in Q4 FY21. Standalone PAT margin stands at 24.48%. Cash profit for the quarter is recorded at rupees 29.66 crore on standalone basis. Cash profit margin stands at 43%. Now let me discuss the consolidated numbers for Q1 FY22. Consolidated revenue from operations for the quarter is rupees 71.01 crore, up by 17.26% as compared to rupees 60.56 crore in Q4 FY21. EBITDA on consolidated basis for the quarter is rupees 30.20 crore, up by 18.01% as compared to 25.59 crore in Q4 FY21. Consolidated EBITDA margin stands at 42.53%. Consolidated PET came in at rupees 18.72 crore, with PET margin at 23.26%. Cash profit for the quarter is recorded at 29.64 crore on consolidated basis. Cash profit margin stands at 41.22%. With this, now I leave the floor open for questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Mm. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nitin Devriya from Augment Catalyst. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I just had a couple of questions. Sir, could you please share the details on the competition landscape? Because we believe there have been there are some uh, key players who have exited. Could you uh, throw some light on that? 
Uh, so we have, as I mentioned, we have four different uh, segments. So the first segment is the natural gas compression. Uh, we believe we have been able to retain a sizable market share uh, over 70 to 80 percent. And we have been able to maintain this over the last 20 years. So we don't see any significant competition getting in that area. On the work over in drilling rigs, uh, we have some sizable uh, competition. We have around uh, active five to six players in the country. Uh, mostly our share is in the ranges of around 20 to 25%. Uh, as far as the gas dehydration business goes, uh, we have a share of nearly around 30% as of now. But as you go forward, we see uh, sizable numbers coming up on this segment. On the integrated project management services, we have various companies, but they are uh, relatively uh, multinational companies. So on the Indian uh, front companies, I believe there are only two to three different players in the country, and we tend to be in that list. So we have been fairly, uh, you know, we have been fairly uh, upward trend towards the competition uh, areas in all the segments. Okay, thank you for the answer, sir. And my second question is, in terms of revenue visibility, can you please help us understand how do you see this going forward? Uh, with uh, momentum in market and uh, new projects and tenders are coming up, we are uh, quite hopeful for uh, getting it on, on positive mode and uh, will definitely close uh, quite above uh, in last financial year. Also for the so, fact that there has been uh, a, a sharp rise in the crude oil prices, so with which we believe that there is a lot of traction going on in the segment. Uh, it has already begun, so we can probably see a good visibility perhaps in next quarter as to how the numbers will flow. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. That is so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sudhir Pera from Right Time Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir, and hearty congratulations on super set of numbers, sir. Thank you. And a very intuitive and, uh, you know, uh, uh, investor presentation is very informative. Uh, so, again, uh, it is good to see this kind of presentation. Uh, sir, my questions, are, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, there is a lot of buzz about the gas economy, and Prime Minister himself was uh, you know, emphasizing the need for CNG growth uh, from the red for yesterday. So how do you see the gas economy or the gas uh, business itself is spending out over the next two, three years, and how our company is uh, placed? to you know, capture those growth? See, as a matter of fact, while we continue to be into an oil and gas segment, but largely our portfolio from uh, the beginning has been focused on the gas production and gas uh, uh, services. Uh, we have been dominantly, uh, you, know, do, you know, dominant in uh, gas compression services, um, thereafter, we ventured into gas dehydration. If you see the scenario across the country, there was a lot of LNG which was been, which is been rather imported, and our honourable prime minister is looking forward to increase or ramp up the capacity of natural gas compression across India. Uh, with this, there definitely has a lot of opportunities. Last two to three years were definitely impacted due to the corona or COVID uh, impact. But we see in last quarter, there is a lot of demand coming up. And with this surging price of crude and gas, uh, more such services are put to uh, use for producing more and more of gas. So as we go forward, it is an uh, undoubted uh, you know, uh, thought that it has to increase. And uh, as you could have also seen, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, speech, that more than 20, uh, there is a huge uh, CNG uh, demand coming up. And that is because of the recent rounds where government has uh, given away a CCD licenses to many companies across India. So with that, uh, 
with uh, you know natural gas, the CNG is also going to have a huge demand. So I have already mentioned about the online and the, the compressors that are booster compressors that are required. So all that put together, I believe there would be a, a sizable demand in both these segments of the natural gas. So that means, sir, uh, can we assume that uh, whatever growth we have seen in the past year, it will be significantly higher uh, in the next, you know, three, four years? Uh, we believe so. We believe so that uh, this uh, trajectory of demand will keep on continuing. Now, if that happens, definitely all the associated uh, sectors uh, along in this line would definitely be impacted with a higher growth. So we have the same belief system what you mentioned. Right, sir. And uh, sir, just uh, you have given the uh, number of you know booster compressors. So there is a huge demand as CT CGD is uh, coming up in a huge way across 125 cities. So uh, the 250 number will translate into what kind of turnover this year, sir, from Two this uh, booster compressor? So we started this activity just a quarter or so before. So this is our install capacity for now, 250 compressors. I'm not sure we would be able to reach to 250 compressors capacity this year. It may take us a year or so to reach the complete capacity of 250 compressors. But as we move forward, our plans are that we may reach to 500 plus compressors. We have that much install capacity. Uh, just to give an idea what kind of uh, the numbers would be, it would it could range anywhere between 40 to 50 lakh a compressor. So even assuming that you are doing example as an 100 compressors, it would be in the ranges of around 40 to 50 crore or 60 crore of that amount. And 250 compressors can easily translate to 150, 120 crore plus kind of the revenue. Great, great, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deeral Shah from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. And thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is pertinent to the debt level. So, so we have managed our debt very well. So what is your outlook on the debt side, sir? So uh, we are constantly reducing our debt and uh, uh, we are quite conscious on uh, taking new debt. So as on date, my uh, term debt is uh, just around 33 CR and on net basis, we are debt free. So my debt to equity on net basis is zero. Okay. And uh, we have, uh, we believe that uh, in uh, last two, three years of difficult time, uh, we have been surviving well only because of low leverage on our balance sheet and will continue to follow our policy of having low leverage on our balance sheet. Okay. And the second uh, second question is, so what is the revenue uh, share which comes from the integrated project management service? And how do we see this going forward, sir? So integrated project management, we are executing as of now our cost contract. And out of my uh, quarter revenue, integrated project management is contributing around 24 to 25% of uh, total revenue mix. Going forward, we are quite uh, bullish on uh, this particular segment to uh, have a growth in particular. Okay, okay. And sir, have we seen any impact of COVID-related uh, restriction on our business? Yeah, we did that. So if you see last year and the year before, because of the COVID, there was a low demand in every uh, consumable because everyone was on a lockdown. Natural gas industries were also on a lockdown. So the demand on the gas and the services were definitely impacted. So we had uh, last two years a uh, little impact on our uh, business. But now it seems that things are getting back to a little normal. So we see that these uh, things will keep reviving uh, at the soonest. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. You and sir, lastly, it? yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it, sir. And sir, have we added any clients uh, to our customer base? Uh, in the oil and gas industry, largely, if you see, there are a handful of customers. So we have not been able to add any new customer as far as uh, the deep industries go. 
but as far as our subsidiary ras goes as i mentioned we had uh, added a new customer who are involved or who have business in cgds like adani uh, eo gpl and all those companies so we have started doing business with all these companies okay 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 thank you so much sir that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of deepak poda from safaya capital please go ahead yeah uh, thank you very much uh, sir for the opportunity so just uh, uh, just on the first query on the depreciation side uh, uh, so 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 we saw dip in the depreciation so so what exactly is that account for and uh, and how that will be going forward so uh, we have uh, put it a specific note on uh, depreciation in our results so uh, till last year we used to amortize our goodwill on uh, books which we have uh, topped from this current financial year to get our uh, results in line with in the year and uh, after being listed we believe that uh, amortization of goodwill may not be required going forward so that is how uh, depreciation has been reduced Okay, so going forward, this uh, six crores a quarter is, uh, is uh, would be fair to assume, right? Uh, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Understood. And and sir, in in terms of your revenue uh, from this base of maybe seventy crores this quarter, uh, uh, can one see a sequential growth over coming quarters? So so any kind of comment uh, would be helpful. So uh, we mostly uh, operate on uh, long-term contracts, and more or less uh, Q on Q uh, would be in line, uh, unless we have some new contract heading in, or uh, or one or two contract maybe uh, getting for renewal. But more or less, we believe that uh, will be in line with what we have reported in Q one. Mm-hmm. Oh, so quarter and quarter, uh, this is the run rate that you are likely to maintain, right? uh for this year yes mm-hmm. and what about the margin front like so so how is that uh, the on margin front we have been fairly able to maintain our uh, margin throughout these many years so our ebitda were always been range of 45 to 50% throughout uh, so we'll be able to maintain those percentage going forward as well 45 to 50% right right so uh, that's it from my side thank you very much thank you thank you reminder to the participants if you have a question please press star then one on your touchstone telephone the next question is from the line of chirag m shah individual investor please go ahead uh hi uh just had a quick query i think i just heard uh, this being addressed by you know one of the queries from one of the other uh, you know investors on the call on this uh, new compressor business i think what did we just say the booster cng booster compressors hmm. uh, which is being uh, produced by uh, you know, the subsidiary uh, subsidiary company ras hmm. so uh, did i hear correctly that the 250 units odd of production numbers would be reached in some time and not immediately and would contribute to about 120 crores of sales top line Yes, so 250 uh, compressor capacity is an install capacity that we have. Okay. Since this is the first year, we won't be able to reach the uh, peak uh, capacity. But okay. with uh, but if if that happens, so it could uh, reach with the capacity of 120 crore plus. But having okay. said that, we have an infrastructure to even double this capacity. That is, okay. it may go to even 500. That will depend on how uh, you know the business turns up in every quarters that come by, and we are okay. also trying. engaging into uh, getting the production streamlined okay and i also heard i could not hear clearly maybe uh, that there is some uh, total demand was projected at what 20000 or with some 6600 is some uh, you know there was some distinction you made mm-hmm. yeah so 20000 compressors are the one that are uh, cng compressor stations are going to come and of okay. there there are both online uh, compressors and there are also compressors that are uh, booster compressors okay, so around okay. 600 compressors would be an online compressors and the balance would be coming through the way of 22 and 37 kilowatt booster compressors okay okay so no i'm just saying that the, for the 250 odd units or maybe going up to 500 what is the market segment that we are targeting the 6600 uh, one is what we are targeting see as of now with our limited understanding since we have ventured uh, very recently but as we understand there are about 
five to seven players in the country. Okay. Anything okay. not too apart, I think these capacities are more or less uh, less than hundred hundred and fifty compressors a year time. So okay. we don't okay. know what kind of uh, target we should be because it's too early for us to even say that what kind of a share that we are looking at. No, no. I, I, I my my question was slightly different, sir. I just said that, uh, you know, you said some twenty thousand total, uh, whatever, of which sixty six hundred are of a particular nature. I'm just saying that this two fifty units that we produce or we intend to produce would be for, uh, you know, what category of compressors? No, sixty six hundred, as I said, were for the online compressors. So the balance online, of twenty thousand. Okay. Okay. Are the ones okay. of 32 and 37 kilowatt. So would be around 13,000 plus capacity is the one that we are making. Okay, okay, okay. In, in around five to eight years kind. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you, thank you. That was the that was the only question from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sudhir Vera from Right Time Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity again. Just wanted to understand the receivable situation at present. Is it comfortable? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. getting our payments in time. So cash flow from operation would be good this year, right? It won't be uh, the cash would won't be stuck in uh, receivables. Is no. it a fair understanding? Yes, correct. Okay, and what is the capex this year? What Apex the now we are uh, eyeing on uh, util, uh, increasing our utilization ratio of existing equipment. Uh, so capex as of now we have not yet uh, counted for, but as and when we get new orders, uh, we may go into capex. So nothing significant uh, as of now. Correct. So, yeah. So okay. this year we are looking in for uh, utilizing and uh, deploying all the equipment and assets that we have. And in parallel, using our own um, uh, internal, uh, you know, the cash flows that come in, we will be looking at for investing into new projects. For now, it is uh, we cannot envisage what kind of a capex would be done. But depending on the size of the project, uh, we might uh, do the capex as and time necessary. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Chirag M. Shab. Individual investor, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just uh, heard about the, the plan, CAPEX plant, uh, but I also saw in the uh, reporting that was done to the stock exchanges, there is a resolution uh, mooted, likely to be mooted for raising up to an amount of 150 crores uh, by issuance of equity or, you know, quasi-equity instruments. Uh, so just wanted some, uh, you know, clarity on that. See, that is we have done as an enabling uh, resolution uh, yeah. because we were we are not sure during which part of the year we would be required to raise the fund. So as a part okay. of an enabling resolution, we keep doing this. Okay, okay. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, Please press star then one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Over to you all. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for taking time and attending our uh, call. Uh, we'll be happy to answer uh, if you have any further query uh, offline, or you can contact a concept or our company team to get your questions resolved. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you all for being a part of conference call. If you need any further information or clarification, please mail at gaurav.g at conceptpr.com or sanjay at conceptpr.in. Ladies and gentlemen, with this we conclude your conference for today. Thank you.